Uh, welcome everybody and uh, okay today we are here with this webinar to talk about uh, galaxy resources for administrators and infrastructure providers i'm jamaru kukuru and today with me there is also lucille delisle um, okay what uh, what are the goals of this webinar uh, we would like to give you some hints some suggestion on uh, where you can find uh, resources, uh, documentation, other materials to build your own uh, Galaxy instance for a multi-user production environment. Uh, what does it mean, multi-user production environment? It means that uh, this webinar is not uh, dedicated or is not uh, in, uh, think it for uh, uh, developers, for example, that would like to test uh, a tool on their notebooks or uh, the last uh, um, Galaxy Futures is instead uh, dedicated to anyone that need to uh, build a Galaxy server that uh, should be used by others from your lab or uh, uh, other kind of uh, public audience. And uh, <clears throat> why do you want to do this? Uh, there are a couple of reasons that, uh, uh, for, for that, um, because you have uh, some security requirements from your institution, for example, you can't, uh, you are not allowed to, to move back, to move uh, outside your uh, institute to your data, or you have some specific uh, compute or storage requirements that are not satisfied by any public, uh, by any Galaxy, any public Galaxy instance that it's uh, available right now. Or you want to customize uh, your instance in a specific way about um, for tools or data libraries or data set or anything else. In any case, for all these reasons and others, uh, we are here to try to give you all the suggestions, all the helps that we can to, uh, to reach your goal. Um, just a short um, bio sketch from me. I'm a member of the European Galaxy team from uh, 2011. Uh, we are based in Freiburg in Germany. Uh, I made my first uh, public Galaxy instance in 2011 and I met the, G the Galaxy community in Chicago at my first GCC in 2012. And today I am the system administrator of usegalaxy.eu. It is uh, one of the um, Galaxy server of the usegalaxy.star uh, network. We have uh, today uh, 30,000 registered users and more or less uh, 3,000 active users per month. And usegalaxy.eu is a, um, .eu, it's a machine made by several boxes with a lot of cores and a lot of RAM. We have a, a computing cluster with around 11,000 cores, 60 terabytes of RAM, and more or less 3 petabytes of storage distributed along several file server and also 16 GPUs. Uh, we, we manage <clears throat> this, uh, this machine uh, using several tools like uh, Ansible, Jenkins, Terraform, GitHub, and others. And uh, this is my full-time job. I'm, uh, I work all the day to, to maintain, uh, to update, uh, to, to fix uh, all the issues that are uh, on usegalaxy.eu. But I'm not alone. There are also other contributions from the other team members and also the users can contribute to, uh, to, to modify in some way usegalaxy.eu because uh, uh, anyone can, if find something wrong uh, on our configuration, on, on our setup, can simply open a pull request on our GitHub repository. And after we review that pull request, if it's uh, fine for us, we can merge it. And in that way, everyone can contribute to it. Um, as I told you today, with me, there is Lucille. And Lucille, if you want to introduce yourself. Yeah, so hi, I'm Lucille Delille, and uh, I'm a postdoc in uh, Denis Dubu Lab uh, at EPFL, so Lausanne in Switzerland. And um, in fact, I, I met the Galaxy community for the first time in 2019, and uh, I fell in love with the community. 
Uh, I, I am um, responsible for a really small private Galaxy instance. So of course, if you compare to Mero, it's really, really small. <laughs> So we have just 10 users uh, and it's uh, just for our, uh, my lab. So we know uh, each other very well. <laughs> we can go next door to say, hey, you're taking my space. Um, we have 32 CPUs, uh, 380 uh, giga of RAM and 16 terabytes. I would say that it takes me roughly 10% of my time. So one uh, half time a week. Of course, it depends on uh, periods. Um, so uh, I was doing it uh, mainly manually, so with the, uh, get a, with the graphical interface. And uh, then I decided that I should probably move to a more automat um, automatic uh, way to deal with that. So I assisted to the admin training in 2020. And uh, in, uh, in March this year, uh, I decided to reinstall my uh, instance from scratch. So I literally erased the, the, the workstation and uh, started uh, keeping the, all the old histories, but uh, with a fresh new galaxy. So I will be able to maybe answer some of your questions uh, and uh, to tell about my experience. And uh, <clears throat> okay, before I start to really with the presentation, I had another introductory slide about uh, uh, some links that uh, are in the, in the slides, um, and I want I would like to, I want to summarize it uh, them here because uh, so I don't need to to read every time the URL. Uh, the slides. Uh, so mm, the first link will be about the Galaxy Community Hub, that it's a website where you can find um, all the details, all the notes, all the links that uh, regard anything about the, the Galaxy community. Probably there you don't have any specific detail of the future of Galaxy or something else that you would like to know, but for sure you find there a link that points to the right web page. Uh, then we have the Galaxy documentation website, that it's uh, the, the documentation that is uh, uh, available with the Galaxy source code and is offered through this uh, website with a really nice uh, uh, read the docs like um, interface. Uh, then we have again, uh, we have also uh, the Galaxy training network website. It's uh, the website where the, where the Galaxy community collect all the training material produced by the, the, the community everywhere at any time. And then we use also <clears throat> some links from the Gala, from the GitHub repository of the Galaxy project, and uh, we will offer you some real example of use Galaxy U from our uh, GitHub repository. Okay, uh, so. Um, here in the community hub, the, the first uh, page that I suggest you to visit if you are starting to think about how to create your own uh, Galaxy server, uh, there is the directory that lists all the platform where you can use or deploy your own Galaxy server. And uh, <clears throat> here there is a list with all the public uh, available server, Galaxy servers. And probably you can try to look in this directory if you have any system administrator close to you to try to contact him to, to, to help you during your journey. There is also uh, another um, table with uh, some academic cloud solution and some commercial cloud solution where you can deploy your uh, uh, Galaxy server. Uh, about the academic, uh, I don't know all of them, but for sure I know that uh, GNAP uh, in Canada and Laniakia in Italy can offer you a way to, to have your own private instance uh, in their cloud uh, and you can manage and use with your group, with your lab in uh, some easy way. Otherwise, if you want to go completely virtual, there are also some Docker images or uh, some virtual images that you can use to instantiate a virtual machine with a, a Galaxy server app ready to go. Um, 
Again, in the same page, there is another table <clears throat> that uh, can give you some guidelines uh, on how to choose uh, the, the proper platform for you. There are some options here and you can try to, to see if your idea uh, fit what, uh, with, what, with um, the suggestions that are in this table or not. And so you can change your mind or completely ignore this table. But in any case, I think it's useful to have a look to this uh, uh, web page. Um, okay, so now, now you know where you want to deploy your uh, Galaxy, now you need to get uh, the Galaxy code. So uh, there is another another page in the Community Hub uh, that explains how to do this and, uh, and uh, some easy way. You just need to clone a GitHub repository in your uh, uh, server where, where you want uh, and uh, just start a bash script and in a couple of minutes you have a, a galaxy server up and running um, and ready to, to be used but uh, this server is um, uh, still are, are using some default values that are okay if you want just to try galaxy but are not fine if you want to have a, a production environment so you need to customize your, your instance and for sure you need to have a look at what are the configuration file of Galaxy. And here in the documentation website, uh, you can find an admin section and we are in the Galaxy configuration subsection where are described all the, all the Galaxy configuration file. Uh, the, the most commonly modified files are the galaxy.yam or toolconf or data.conf or jobconf uh, uh, file and uh, uh, they are uh, in some two at least two different uh, format um, there are some yaml file but also xml file and uh, and also you can find here all the other uh, files um, also in this page there is a configuration option that show you all the, the all the option that uh, this file uh, uh, can um, can offers to your uh, setup and so you, you you can find here a short description that uh, helps you a lot when you are first looking at these uh, uh, these files okay another really useful website it's the the, the training the, the galaxy train network website uh, where are collected all the, the, the training materials produced by the worldwide Galaxy community. As you can see here, it's divided in different sections. There is a section for scientists, uh, a section for developers and administrators, and a section for contributors and instructors. Obviously, today we are interested to the server administration section. And um, <clears throat> you can find a subsection with some core materials that you really need to, to, to check. And another optional, I can, I can call it optional, uh, sex subsection with some other material for different topics that depends what you want to do with your, uh, your Galaxy 7. Probably you, you don't need to, to review all this material, but if you are interested in a specific topic, you can check uh, the, the materials that is available there. And the, the first tutorial that I would like to, to show you, to introduce a bit, uh, it's uh, uh, the one that uh, explains you how to install Galaxy using Ansible. Uh, the Galaxy community decided at a certain point to use Ansible for, its, uh, for all its uh, deployment of recipes. And so all these tutorials are using Ansible. If you are not familiar with Ansible, there is also another tutorial that uh, will introduce you how to use what Ansible is and how to use. But Ansible is essentially a, a management tool, a tool that a software that uh, allow you to configure in a proper way your server and uh, um, just uh, executing, uh, asking Ansible to execute a, a playbook. So in this tutorial, um, you will be guided step by step to create uh, your own playbook uh, to install Galaxy, but also 
uh, other software that are needed to, to Galaxy, like Postgres, SQL, or SystemD, or uh, a proxy server like NGINX. And step by step, at the end, uh, you will have uh, your your playbook ready with uh, with the production ready Galaxy server ready ready to go. Um, Okay, that's one of the first examples that I want to show you. It's uh, it's the playbook that we are using to to deploy use galaxy.eu on uh, on our uh, infrastructure. It's available through our GitHub repository, um, our GitHub organization into this uh, repository. And uh, here we have all the details of the playbook that we are using every day, every night, better to redeploy use galaxy u if you if we need to modify any aspect of the configuration with galaxy u we come here and modify this playbook or uh, any of the um, variable files um, that we are using with this uh, playbook uh, any of the tasks uh, or any of the rules that uh, we are using to deploy an asset playbook and just wait for uh, jenkins to redeploy <clears throat> the playbook uh, every night and uh, next morning we will have the updates up and running uh, on use galaxy eu um, okay so after using the playbook uh, made uh, following the tutorial you have a, a production environment the galaxy production environment uh, galaxy installed in a production environment and uh, <clears throat> Uh, I think you can review also this uh, this page that describes in very fine detail uh, what does it mean of a production environment. What uh, uh, what you really need to know <clears throat> to have uh, in your uh, your Galaxy server uh, uh, configured in a proper way to sustain a lot of user users uh, using it. Um, for example, here you can find described how to move from the default SQLite, SQLite database to a Postgres server, or how to use a, how to put a proxy server in front of your Galaxy server, or um, that it's a really important one, uh, the most important aspect from my point of view for of a production environment. Move uh, move away to run um, your all your tools locally, and instead start to use a uh, a cluster or at least um, a job scheduler and that's exactly what uh, uh, you can find in this uh, web page of the documentation website uh, how to connect your galaxy to a compute cluster galaxy can use a lot of different uh, uh, job schedulers like turkey pbs or uh, ht condor the one used by use galaxy u or slarm used by use galaxy.org or use galaxy australia and uh, several others and uh, <clears throat> we have also uh, another tutorial that describe you how to connect um, a slarm cluster to your galaxy server in this case the, the, the tutorial will use uh, slarm and um, what is in interesting from my point of view of this tutorial that you are um, uh, updating the playbook created with the previous tutorial so you have a uh, start with the first tutorial to create your playbook and then following the other tutorial so you simply had uh, some new tasks, new rules uh, to that uh, to the same playbook uh, to improve to uh, to update your uh, Galaxy setup. And um, okay, now that you have your Galaxy server up and running, you have a, a cluster where you can submit your job. You want to map to 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 create a map. Uh, to tell Galaxy how you how should uh, map uh, the jobs to a specific destination. So you want to specify, uh, for example, for a specific tool, uh, how many cores should be used, how many RAMs should be uh, reserved on the, on the working nodes, uh, <clears throat> and uh, other details of uh, this kind. And uh, yeah, you can do it uh, easily. 
um, Galaxy have uh, several um, several way to do this. Uh, you can do it in a static way, so it doesn't mean that you simply uh, need to modify a configuration file uh, where you need to put uh, all these details. I want to use this tool with uh, this amount of cores um, and should be executed in this destination. But it's a, a static way to to describe uh, this uh, this kind of map. But you can do also in a dynamic way. That means that uh, all, all the details are, uh, are refined, are um, are uh, evaluated at a runtime. For example, because you want to use a different value if you have a, a group for a group of users, or if your input data are of certain sites, or any any other um, idea of this kind. And you can uh, do it uh, easily using um, the dynamic tool destination. Um, uh, tool that Galaxy offers to you. This is just a kind of a YAML file that you need to, to prepare with all the details of your jobs and destination. Or you can also use in a Python function. So uh, that means you can write your Python code and Galaxy will evaluate that code before uh, uh, start before to, 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 to send your jobs to, to the schedulers. And again, we have uh, <clears throat> here um, the tutorial and the GTM website where you can find uh, um, all, all an example for all this uh, this opportunity that you have um, to create your own map. And uh, <clears throat> as an example here, we have the jobs dispatcher that we are using with Galaxy. It's a Python code available through our um, GitHub repository. Uh, that uh, every job that is uh, executed on usegalaxy.eu uh, will be managed by uh, sorting at that it's in the name of this uh, this tool and uh, it uses uh, two yaml file one uh, yaml file to uh, describe uh, the destination so yeah you can see we have a label we have some general info that describe if this destination it's uh, remote or not uh, which are the limits on this that destination if you can you can use a maximum amount of a 16 core and 31 gigabyte of ram you can specify some environmental uh, variables if you need it and there are the the, the parameters for uh, specific parameters for the schedule and we have several, uh, a lot of different um, destinations. And then there is another YAML file specific for the tool. So here you can see for data fetch tool, uh, we are specifying that we want to execute it with uh, uh, one core, uh, 0 0.3 gigabytes per run, no GPUs. We want to use the Condor. We are specifying the temp, uh, uh, environment temp uh, variables. And we are adding some specific parameters for this tool to the uh, job scheduler configuration and so on and so far for all the tools that are uh, made it a specific uh, uh, configuration and once again it's available through our uh, github repository so it's a uh, we, we are using HT Condor and use Galaxy U, but I think you can easily modify sorting out to, to if you are using a different uh, job scheduler and now it's your turn to see that. so um the most of the requests that you would receive from your users uh, may be, um, oh, uh, I saw this workflow and I would like to run it on my instance. Uh, how can I make it? Uh, oh, I read in this publication that uh, I would need this tool, this specific version. Uh, can you put it in the Galaxy? So there are multiple ways to, uh, to deal with tool management. Uh, the easiest and the first way I would say that uh, you, I was doing is uh, to use the admin uh, web page. So on your Galaxy instance, you have an admin tab, and here you can deal with uh, the tool management. But uh, this is catastrophic for uh, reproducibility because then you don't know what you installed, what you did not install, and um, also it's very uh, tedious to do. So I really uh, encourage you to do some more automatization. So just uh, I provide the link on uh, how to use this interface, but uh, yeah, I would recommend to use a, a more automated way. Uh, so the, the, the other way to use it is to use ephemeris. Um, 
Mauro, can you switch the slide, please? Uh, so ephemeris is a Python script, uh, a Python library, and a bunch of scripts uh, to to come to get uh, the list of tools from a workflow file, but also to interact with your Galaxy instance and to install tools, for example. So I provide the link for the ephemeris documentation, but there is also a Galaxy training material for, the, for, for how to use ephemeris uh, and how to manage your, your tool installation with it. If you want even more automatization, there is a playbook uh, that is available so you can uh, use Ansible to run ephemeris for you. So what you need is to create a YAML file with the, the list of all the tools you want to install. And if you want different versions for the tool, you can specify all the versions. I provide here the link for the GitHub um, repository with all the tools that I installed on usegalaxy.eu. Uh, so this is a bunch of YML files for the different uh, topics of biology. And this is a good example with a huge YML file, <laughs> I have to say. Uh, but this is uh, good because they use GitHub this way. If a user wants to uh, add a new tool or change the version uh, of a tool, it can, it can just do a pull request and then the pull requests are reviewed. And uh, because usegalaxy.eu is highly automated, uh, they use Jenkins to uh, install the tools uh, every week based on this list of tools. And there is a training material also uh, that would explain you how to uh, use Jenkins to automate, to automate most of the tasks you need, and in particular, the tool management. Um, so, the tool, in fact, it um, can be installed through uh, thanks to the tool shed, which is a repository with all the tools. So there are different levels of the tool. So the first one is a wrapper. So this is a web page that you will see and with the form to set all the parameters, the input that you want. But behind this, there is all the dependency issues. Uh, long time ago, there were tools that were, in fact, the dependencies for the tools. So this is, uh, if you look at uh, old tools, you can see that there are some package, blah, blah, blah. And uh, these were, in fact, just uh, dependencies for other tools. And now um, uh, Galaxy uses Conda to solve the dependencies, which is very nice, because then you can pin specific version for tools. So for when you want to install a new tool, this is super great. Um, if you're not uh, familiar with Conda uh, and you want to administrate the Galaxy, I think you would need to uh, to read uh, the slides uh, that uh, are part of the training material that describe how Conda is used in uh, the framework of uh, Galaxy. And uh, I would like to share my experience on this, uh, which is that when you want to install new tools, this is super great and it works super nice. However, when you want to install old tools, sometimes you will face some issues. And I told you that uh, in March, I uh, installed from scratch my instance, and it took me one day with Ansible to install Galaxy. And then it took me two days to solve the dependencies of old tools. Because, for example, you want to install uh, a mapper that would require um, another, uh, another software, but the software, of course, upgraded, and nobody thought that it would break the, the, the compatibility. So you need to manually go to the Conda environment, fix some stuff. So uh, yeah, you need, probably, you may face this type of issues if you administrate a, a Galaxy. Uh, so it's good to know that behind the tools, there is Conda. Another part uh, of the of the, the data that you may need to update regularly is the uh, reference data. So when you use, uh, I would talk about genomics because this is a field I know the most, but I'm quite sure that there are also some databases that are needed for other subjects. Um, 
but so in genomics, you need to um, to map your your data to reference genomes. Uh, for example, if you want to do something on mouse or on chicken, and you have different version of the genome, and the the mapper, so the different uh, tools would require to build an index. This is very long to build an index. So you try to build it once, store it, and then say to Galaxy, this is here. So each time you need it, you can go there. So there are multiple ways to deal uh, with this local data. So uh, first of all, you need to use data managers, which are tools that will build the reference data. So like for the tools management, you can use the Galaxy uh, website. Uh, I mean, the yeah, the, the web page of your Galaxy instance. But again, I would not recommend to use it. <laughs> and uh, ephemeris is again your solution. So similarly for the tool managing, you can uh, use ephemeris to, uh, to deal with the reference data. Um, so, um, an idea that uh, came from uh, Nate uh, from uh, usegalaxy.org uh, is super great, is that uh, building the, the indices is very long. So when I did uh, my Galaxy installation, it took me three days to build all the reference. And it's a bit stupid because most of people use the same genomes. So most of people would use the same reference data. And the idea of Nate was that, in fact, we should provide the references for the genomes that are commonly used by the, the community. And then we share it in readily to uh, anyone that wants to use it. And so I share with you the link uh, with the interview of Nate that explained how he came to this idea. And uh, so his idea is to use the CVMFS. So it's a file system developed by the CERN that um, is a read-only. But so the idea is that you have uh, the data, you put the data in one place, then you copy it to big centers everywhere in the world. And then each Galaxy instance can connect to this stratum one and get the data. And if one is failing, then you can use the other one. So there is a description on how is it working on uh, the um, uh, galaxyproject.org. And there is also a Galaxy training material uh, that uh, show you how to use it. And the idea was that linked to this system, which is really great, would come um, community uh, called uh, IDC that would, uh, that would uh, be in charge of updating the reference genomes because regularly the genome is updated and it's important to keep up to date so people keep to use CVMFS. Unfortunately, people in charge of this uh, IDC have been trapped by a lot of other things. And in fact, it has not been maintained so that's why, uh, for example, I did not use it because I needed the chicken genome, the zebrafish genome, and all these were to old version in the CVMFS. But I'm really convinced that uh, we need just a kick to, to put it back on the track uh, to update this, uh, this CVMFS uh, resource, which is uh, really great. And this would be the solution for a lot of administrators for the galaxy. Okay, thank you, Lucien. Uh, okay, so uh, where we are, you have a your uh, galaxy server up and running, your cluster, you have tools, you have reference data, you are starting to, to running a lot of jobs uh, and you are starting to collect a lot of data. And so your next issue will be how can I expand my storage? Uh, for sure, when, um, if you are not uh, uh, choose uh, the right size for uh, your storage system, at a certain point uh, you will need to, to update it. Um, Galaxy has a, um, a built-in data virtualization technology called Galaxy Object Store that uh, 
uh, it's a kind of uh, um, abstract layer that decouple galaxy business logic from the details of the media that we are using. Uh, in this way, um, it makes possible to, to, to store data on a lot of different uh, kind of uh, uh, media from uh, local storage, uh, a single hard disk with a single file system, to uh, cloud-based uh, solutions. And um, you can simply plug in additional uh, media to, to your configuration uh, without need to change anything on about uh, except a uh, configuration file on, uh, on Galaxy. And um, <clears throat> uh, a Galaxy admin can also um, set object store to, to use a, a single backend, or you can create a, a nested relation between uh, multiple backends. Uh, using the different data distribution methods like the hierarchical one or the distributed one. They are uh, quite similar from the point of view of where your data is, uh, is read, but they are different from the point of view of where your data is written. And uh, in the hierarchical way, you, your data are written also, always uh, in the first backend available, instead in the distributed mode method, uh, uh, there is a pseudo randomly selected uh, criteria to choose uh, which backend uh, will be used. Uh, will be used. Um, okay, and this is uh, the tutorial related to the object store that uh, will describe, will help you to have a Galaxy instance using uh, multiple different storage uh, location uh, using both uh, methods, the hierarchical one and the distributed one. And uh, again, uh, you can simply add to your uh, playbook uh, all the tasks that, uh, that you need for uh, your, uh, your setup. Uh, here, an example from uh, UseGalaxyU. This is the object store configuration XML file of UseGalaxyU, where we have uh, uh, 11 different uh, file uh, server that we are using. Along the years, we collected a lot of uh, storage system and simply added to the to this uh, to this file uh, the, the the new file system, the new file system, uh, the new file server. And uh, we are using distributed uh, method. And uh, as you can see. <clears throat> Uh, all these file server, all those this backend uh, have this uh, as this uh, option, the weight, the weight option, and uh, all of them are uh, are using weight to zero, except the one uh, that we that we are currently using to to write data. That uh, this one file time that uh, has the value one. So in this way, uh, we are using a distributed uh, method to. That allow our uh, that allow use Galaxy U to to read uh, all data from all the whole file server, but uh, is using the, the the current one, the one that has space at the moment, just to to write uh, to write the new data. And again, this file is available through our GitHub uh, repository, so you can is is there for your reference if you, if you need to check. Okay, another aspect that could be useful for a Galaxy administrator is how is it possible to run jobs on remote sites? So you have your, uh, uh, your Galaxy server, you have your, for example, your computing cluster locally, and but you have also some computational resources uh, on a remote site. Uh, to do that, uh, you can use uh, another project of the Galaxy community called Pulsar. Uh, Pulsar is a a Python server application that um, allow a Galaxy instance to execute job on a remote system, also a Windows system, uh, without the, the need to have a shared file system between the two the two sites. Um, Galaxy can send to the Pulsar site all the inputs file, the scripts, uh, configuration, all the details, all the details needed to execute the jobs. Then uh, Pulsar there can um, run the job or at least send to the local scheduler, uh, uh, ask to the local scheduler to execute the jobs. And when the, the job is finished, it can transfer back all the result to the Galaxy server. 
and this is uh, completely transparent from the user point of view. Um, we have a tutorial describing how to use uh, uh, Pulsar to run uh, jobs on remote resources. And because there isn't any file system share between the two sites, um, the tutorial show you how to use a RabbitMQ message queuing server to allow Galaxy and Pulsar change messages and all the details needed uh, by, by them. Um, okay, uh, we are using uh, on production Pulsar. Use Galaxy.eu is using Pulsar right now. We have a project called uh, Pulsar Network. Uh, the Pulsar Network is uh, um, a wide job execution system distributed across several European data centers uh, that allow um, to scale uh, Galaxy instances computing power over heterogeneous uh, uh, resources. And you can see here on the right all the partners that are providing their resources to us uh, and uh, we we all together we, we we installed on the remote data center uh, pulsar site uh, and nowadays some some tools of um, use galaxy u are running on on those uh, data center um, here we there is the documentation website of the pulsar network project uh, where you can find uh, uh, all the details how to install and configure uh, configure a Pulsar network endpoint uh, into a, an OpenStack cloud infrastructure and how to connect it uh, to use galaxy.eu if you want to share your resources with us. But uh, uh, I mean, the same Pulsar endpoint can be associated to any uh, Galaxy instance, so you can use it also uh, in, in your infrastructure easily. Uh, here, an example, a um, graph showing uh, one of the, our um, chemoinformatics COVID-19 activities uh, where we uh, executed around 30,000 GPUs jobs in three months, uh, distributing them along uh, across uh, two different uh, remote GPU clusters, one in UK and one in um, Germany. And uh, uh, exactly, we, we, we used the uh, Pulsar for that and uh, quite was quite successful. And the graph gave me the clue to introduce the next topic. It's uh, monitoring. Because uh, now you have your infrastructure ready, everything is working, but you need to know what's going on into your uh, infrastructure. So you need a monitoring system. And uh, the monitoring stack used by the Galaxy community is uh, made in, uh, using several tools like uh, Grafana, uh, that is an interactive visualization web app, or, and uh, InfluxDB, that is a time series database. Uh, Telegraph, that it's a plugin driven server agent for collecting and reporting matrix, and uh, GXadmin, that it's a command line utility for Galaxy administrator. And here the data flow is that the Galaxy produce data and or GXadmin extract uh, those data from the Galaxy database. Then Telegraph consumes and uh, buffers it and buffers this data before sending it to the InfluxDB database, uh, which stores the data. And then we have the Grafana uh, web app that uh, is used to visualize the collected data. And there is a tutorial that uh, can explain to you how to set up InfluxDB, Telegraph, Grafana, and uh, how to add all the details to your play to, to have a, probably a new playbook uh, to create your uh, your um, monitoring uh, infrastructure. Um, here are some some panel from uh, the, the Grafana dashboard of US Galaxy U that it's available in this uh, website. I mean, you can see the the first graph. It's uh, showing the, the, the number of jobs that are running on Condor or uh, that are waiting in the queue. We have instead here uh, the second one, uh, the, the load of the, uh, of the Galaxy server, or uh, the third one, uh, the, the, the number of jobs waiting in the Galaxy queue to be 
to be sent to the job scheduler or um, <clears throat> we can have a different uh, dashboard showing some disk matrix of all the of several uh, servers of the usegalaxy.eu infrastructure and uh, you can easily realize that the CMF server there at the time of this screenshot uh, had a really really bad time uh, in any case, if you are curious to know what's going on to you into usegalaxy.eu at the moment, you can simply click on this link and you will have all the details uh, about the jobs, about um, how many users are on usegalaxy.eu, how many, uh, which is the, the, the situation of uh, all the servers that uh, uh, are part of, the, of, our, of our infrastructure. Uh, okay, mm, I think yes. Um, the last topic of this uh, webinar it's about uh, user authentication. So um, Galaxy supports anonymous users, so users that can use your Galaxy instance uh, without providing any authentication, any any details. But uh, uh, using Galaxy in this way is not convenient because uh, you are losing a lot of benefit of the. Uh, Galaxy future. You can save your your data. You can save your history. You can save your your workflows and and, and other things like like that. You can. Uh, so it's better for um, from the point of view user to be able to create an account on your uh, uh, Galaxy server and uh, store all the details of the activities uh, um, using that account. And Galaxy offer. A, different uh, methods to create a user account you can uh, uh, use the the, the built-in mechanism or galaxy in galaxy that uh, store uh, uh, local username and password in the galaxy database uh, or uh, <clears throat> you can use a uh, you can leverage the OpenID Connect uh, protocol, uh, so in this way, user can log in Galaxy using an identity that uh, is that has been created on a, on, a, on another um, infrastructure, another authentication and authorization infrastructure, like the one that uh, Elixir can uh, can offer you, and uh, this is exactly what is described in this uh, page of the. Um, Galaxy community, or the community hub. Uh, here you can find all the details how you can uh, uh, register your server to the Elixir AI infrastructure and uh, how you can update, how you can modify the Galaxy configuration to use uh, that, uh, that infrastructure. Or <clears throat> we have also this tutorial that describe you um, how Galaxy can delegate authentication to an external uh, authentication system like uh, an LDAP server or, uh, or, uh, or a PAM module or uh, a proxy server like NGINX or Apache. And uh, with uh, all this uh, method in place, you can choose which is um, which better fits with your uh, with your community, with your group, and simply uh, follow the instruction in these links, and uh, it will be really easy for you to uh, to set up uh, your Galaxy server in the proper way um, for your user users. Okay. So, uh, if you reviewed all the materials that we provided to you and if you still have uh, some question or you struggle to find a solution to your issue, uh, you can still uh, use the Pangalatic search uh, web form uh, available in the community hub at this address, this uh, URL. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, 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 Google custom engine that uh, allow you to search uh, uh, across all the Galaxy websites. Or uh, you can use one of the GitHub channels that uh, we have. Um, we have a Galaxy admin channels where you can find a lot of uh, Galaxy administrators and they are really friendly. So please be free to ask uh, anything that you need uh, there. Or we have also um, a Galaxy dev channels that is mostly dedicated to uh, question about uh, Galaxy code or Galaxy futures. Uh, 
If uh, your question doesn't fit in on, on any of the two uh, previous channel, you can use the general Galaxy Topics channel that it's free to any kind of question related to, to Galaxy. Uh, this year, before GCC, there is a training week uh, um, that uh, has also a, an admin track. So this could be uh, the right moment to, to meet a lot of uh, uh, Galaxy administrators or the, that uh, would like to be a Galaxy administrator. And uh, my last slides, uh, it's about uh, how to stay update. Okay, you have your Galaxy server up and running, but uh, you need to stay update uh, on what's going on in the Galaxy community. So for sure, I suggest you, I strongly suggest you to participate to the annual uh, uh, meeting, the annual uh, uh, Galaxy conference meeting. Um, um, there is also an admin training uh, section and an admin training event uh, every year. And uh, um, here in this page of the uh, community hub, you can find all the past uh, GCC events with all the materials, all the slides, all the videos, all the PDF. And uh, instead here, um, you can find the details of the admin training events. Uh, I strongly suggest to uh, take a look also to the GTM website and day by day to see all the updates that are uh, um, collected there. And uh, there are also some uh, several uh, Galaxy mailing lists. And uh, I would like to highlight the fact that there is one dedicated to public servers that is used mainly to communicate security issues, security concerns, any security problem are uh, distributed through this uh, mailing list, probably also through the GitHub channel, but also through the mailing list. So uh, could be a good idea to, to subscribe that mailing list. Um, I think it's all from my side. Lucille, Clements, if you want to add something or correct me in any way. It's fine, thank you. Uh, thank you. There's no way I'm correcting you guys. No way. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you, Mauro. And excuse me, Lucille. Um, that was great. Um, we had a whole bunch of questions. Um, oh, five boy. of them have been answered by busy buddies like myself and Bjorn already. Um, but we have three thank outs. You, yeah. We have three outstanding. Um, let's see. I'm going to take the uh, let's see, one from Christoph first which is how do Pulsar and Slurm live together? Oh, it's quite easy. I mean, uh, um, I'm not a Slurm guy. I'm not using Slurm at, for the moment, at least. But uh, uh, in the Pulsar network, uh, we use it a lot, uh, HT Condor. And because uh, from the point of view of Pulsar and also from the point of view of guys, it doesn't matter if you are using Slurm or HT Condor, it's quite easy. It's just a matter to uh, to check uh, in the. Um, let me see if I find easily the web page. Yeah, here. Uh, just to check here, uh, which is the the um, the job scheduler that you want to use, and uh, check uh, what you need to change in the configuration. Uh, it's easy. From the point of view of Galaxy Impulsor, it doesn't matter if you, are, you want to use uh, Condor, Slurm, or any other job runner. Thank you, Mero. Um, let's see. It's approaching the end of the hour. We still have a couple minutes left, but um, I'm going to go over the hour. I'm going to keep asking questions um, until we're done or until you guys need to leave. Um, but just to make sure I get everything done in the hour. Thank you very much for presenting. Okay, I'll say this again at the end because you know what? This is my really mean it double. So um, thank you for presenting and thank everyone for being here and asking great questions. Um, the recording will be available on the website hopefully later today. The slides are already available on the website. So thank you very much. Okay, I'm going to move on to the next question from Peter Van. Oh, I always pronounce your name wrong, Van Hoosden, um, who says, Use Galaxy EU runs in a cloud environment, OpenStack, I believe, I think. Are you using a file system based object store or are you using the OpenStack object storage, Swift? Okay, 
um, yes, use Galaxy U. It's an hybrid machine from that point of view because uh, uh, we are using real physical servers for uh, the the Galaxy instance. So Galaxy itself it's running in a real physical server but instead of all the computing cluster it's uh, on the cloud so we have all the working nodes uh, our um, our cloud uh, cloud machine our, and um, uh, for the file server um, at the moment uh, um, no we are not using if i'm let me think. No, uh, for the moment we are not using any uh, OpenStack uh, storage solution, except for uh, uh, the um, the root file system of the working nodes. They, they are distributed through OpenStack, but uh, uh, the working nodes, the Galaxy servers, uh, are using the same storage, uh, the same shared storage uh, through. Um, um, really, really huge uh, storage system. Uh, so OpenStack it's used only to create the, the, the working nodes of our uh, computing cluster. And I'm pretty, pretty uh, satisfied to, to use OpenStack because it's quite easy to uh, change the configuration of your clusters or your computing cluster in an easy way. Just a, just a way, just a, you just need to create a new image, deploy into the OpenStack and run the script that recreate all the working nodes. So, we are, we are happy with that. Thank you, Mel. And uh, let's see, I think we are out of questions because Bjorn answered another one. <laughs> I think he did. Maybe, may, yeah, anyway. Somebody answered it. It is too fast, Bjorn. Yes. So there are a whole bunch of answered questions in the QA tab um, if you're curious about those too uh let's see so we are at the hour and we are out of questions so that, that worked out really well um I, i'm going to do it anyway thank you again for presenting so um you're welcome uh, probably david you can you can uh, show exactly when uh, will be the next gcc and uh, when yeah is the... thank you mara yes thank you so i'm not really awake yet as as mara has noticed um so <laughs> <laughs> the next GCC is coming right up. That's the Galaxy Community Conference. Uh, training starts on June 28th, I believe, and it runs for a week. It's asynchronous. It's online. It's really cheap. Um, and uh, the early registration deadline for GCC is Monday. No, not Monday. Sorry, June 1st, which I think is Tuesday. Anyway, it's June 1st, whatever day that is. Um, so the first thing coming up is... Um, yeah, the June 1st registration deadline. We are still accepting poster demo abstracts, and the deadline for that is June 14th, I believe. And then June 25th is when all registration ends. So get registered by June 25th or be left out, and nobody wants that. Um, it's still pretty cheap, even you know after June 1st. It's, it's a great deal. Um, training starts June 28th, runs for a week, and then we have a three-day meeting running i believe the 6th through the 8th yeah the 6th through the 8th of july um, right now we are reviewing talks submissions and so we hope to have a list of accepted talks or most accepted talks posted sometime this week so you can make an informed decision next tuesday on the first and then we finish with the two-day co-fest um july 9th and 10th where we all do collaborative work. And that is not just coding. Our co-fests are about building the community more than they are about building code. So the whole point of that is to bring on new contributors and that's new contributors for training, documentation, testing, um, best practice workflows, you name it. Um, so thank you, Mara, for that prompt. Uh, let's see. And I think we're done. Are we done? Um, Lucille, anything? No, it's fine. Okay. Thank you so much for being here. Um, thanks, everyone, for participating in the call. And uh, the URL for this presentation, a lot of link in it. Yes. Um, so go to the event page, which is on the hub, which is where you registered for it. Um, and I could, I don't know. Yeah, go there, okay? Because that's where the slides are, and that's where the video will be linked to. 
Um, thanks, Christoph, for the question. Oh, yeah, and Bea's on it. God bless you, Bea. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Um, this webinar series is done. This was a great way to close it out. And um, we'll see you all hopefully in the fall, the fall, the northern fall. Okay. Thanks, everyone.